Okay, I'm just gonna warn you now, I've already filmed this video. Not only have I filmed this video, I've edited it and almost uploaded it. And then I wasn't happy with it. So here I am again. Get yourself one of these, maybe a snack. I know it's gonna be a long one because it always is. And I've already filmed it. And I know that now I have more to say than I did before. So let's lock in. 2023 is over. I feel like every year, every time we're always like, where'd the year go? I blinked and it was over. Like every time, but seriously, like what? I literally can't believe that. 2023 is over. The new year is upon us and you know what that means. Everybody's making their new year's resolutions. Everybody is preparing to wake up brand new. But we know that not only can you choose in the new year to become a new version of yourself, you can choose to wake up brand new any day that you want. But especially in the new year on a blank slate, it's a really good time to start shifting, changing, rearranging things, setting your goals and getting your vision together for what is this year going to be for me. So today, not only do I want to talk about how you can have a great year in 2024, but I want to talk about how you can fully, fundamentally to the core of your being, change who you are if you want to see yourself as a different version of yourself and if you want to be the version of yourself living in your dream life the new year is a golden opportunity so let's go into the new year with a clear focus with a clear vision for what we're manifesting what we're calling into our lives and let's do it with intention and let's do it in a way that is easy and effortless and feels really good so the first step to manifesting your dream life is get clear this is always going to be the first step of anything that you manifest you want to have a clear intention for what you're doing what the desire is and why. What is the reasoning behind the desire? And I know when I say get clear on what you want, some people will just automatically bypass. I know what I want, but I'm asking you, do you actually know what you want? And then you're asking me, how are you gonna tell me I don't know what I want? Well, if you're in a space where you are ready to manifest your dream life, that may entail a lot of things. You might want a new car, you might want a new job, you might wanna call in new love, you might want a new house, you might want to start dressing differently, you might wanna get healthy, you might wanna present yourself differently or start a business or manifest a new friend group, travel experiences. There could be so many things that encompass your dream life. And you're like, so, okay, I want this thing, I want that thing, I want this thing, I want that thing, I want this thing, I want that thing, and that thing over there. And I'm like, great, that's lovely. You know the things that you want, but then when you get to the stage of going about manifesting those things, then you're like, okay, I have to affirm 50 million times for this, and then I have to do this thing, and then what about this thing, and then how is this gonna fit into the puzzle, and now I'm juggling this, and how am I gonna do this if I haven't done this yet, and this thing has to come before this, so I have to do this, but then I can't do this thing until I talk to this person, and then this person doesn't get this, then I can't do that. And then it becomes a convoluted kind of thing where you're just like, I don't know what to do here. When you have all these different aspects, all these different things that you wanna call into your life, it can be kind of like decision paralysis where you have all these things, you don't know what to do, you're overwhelmed with all the things that need to be changed, all the things that need to be fixed. You wanna manifest so many things. It can be super overwhelming to just say, okay, overnight, I'm just gonna be this person. And it's okay to want all those things and it's totally possible to manifest all those things and do it at the same time. But the thing about it is you don't wanna overwhelm yourself with the to-do list, the task list of manifestation where you have to check this thing off and that thing and I have to make sure I affirm for this thing and then my visual has to be about this thing and then if I don't do this, if I didn't do stats this night about this thing, then this thing's not gonna come. And this thing has to come in this order. So I have to do this step first. And then I have to think about this step, but I'm supposed to be living in the end, but I can't live in the end if this thing hasn't happened. And this thing over here hasn't happened. And I haven't changed in this way. This person's not showing up for me like this way. So actually I don't feel like my dream lifestyle. So I need to affirm more in this area. This becomes a convoluted mess. So when I say get clear, it means many things. Yes, it does mean going into all that detail, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Let's go all the way beneath the surface. Let's go all the way to the root and find out what that root desire is. What do all of these desires imply? What is the energy that encompasses all of these things being already manifested, being already done, and being your way of being, being just the way you live, who you are, your natural state? So let's say in your dream life, you're manifesting something for health, you're manifesting something for love, you're manifesting something for money. So instead of affirming specifically for all of those things, Let's find the through line there. What is the feeling that you're seeking out of manifesting these things? What energetic payoff are these things, whether they be tangible or intangible, how are they gonna affect your life and your mood and your feeling and your overall dominant state of being? Maybe the overall energy is security. Maybe it's feeling supported, being supported in your relationships, being supported in money, being supported by your body, feeling healthy, feeling capable of doing the things that you wanna do physically, knowing that you have people you can go to, you have a support system, knowing that you are fully accepted, that you are fully loved, so that 
overall encompassing energy is just feeling supported. So instead of focusing on affirming for this and affirming for that and affirming for the other thing, you would focus on feeling like a supported person. Instead of affirming specifically for all of those things and beating yourself up for whether or not you're focusing on each desire enough, let's find the energy that encompasses all of those things. So maybe that feeling is satisfaction. Maybe knowing that you are loved, you're with the person that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, you're starting a family with this person, knowing that you have the resources to do whatever you wanna do, you can travel wherever you want, you get to have new experiences, you get to see the places that you want to see. Your business is fully supporting you in that or your job is fully supporting you in that and you feel really passionate about what you do. You feel like your job supports what you do and you're good at it and you're recognized for it and you feel valued there and you also feel like you have the time freedom to do all the things that you wanna do. That could be a really big shift from where you are in your current identity. So instead of trying to affirm for all of these things or visualize all these different scenes, you could find a general affirmation or a general scene that implies the end where all of these these things are fulfilled but also it's good to go deeper into the root to that core desire because the thing about it is if you can embody that energy the energy of satisfaction or the energy of security or the energy of freedom whatever that root desire is that implies everything else is fulfilled everything else is done then by embodying that energy by holding that frequency you are calling in all of those desires and more and all of the other things that are in alignment with that energy so you become an energetic match for all of the things that you want all of the things that you desire in a very effortless way when you just say what is the energy of the person who already has all these things what is the energy of the version of me already living my dream life? What's their dominant state? How do they dominantly feel emotionally? What's their usual mood? Like, how do you think that person feels knowing that all of these things get to be normal, natural in their life? Maybe it's actually not that exciting of an emotion. If you're consistently making $10,000 a month or $15,000 a month, you're probably not that excited about it every single month, but you probably are really grateful that all your bills are paid or that you feel supported by money, that you feel like things get to be consistent and natural and normal for you and you just feel supported, you feel taken care of, and that is your overall energy. You're just grateful to be in that energy of being supported or you're just grateful to live a life where you feel satisfied, where you feel like you have time for your passions, where you have time to enjoy yourself, where you have time to spend with family and loved ones. Let's dig a little bit deeper than I just want this one specific thing or I want this thing and that thing but I don't think that this energy could be something that's encompassed in all aspects and areas of my life. Why not? If you hold that state of being a person who is already fulfilled with their life, then all those other desires, they also have to manifest. Once you have that energy signature, here's something really cool that you could do with it. If you're not exactly sure the specific desires that you want, or you know that you wanna go a certain direction, but you don't necessarily know for sure what you wanna do, like maybe you wanna make a career move, but you don't know exactly where you wanna go. You just know that you wanna feel this way. You wanna make maybe a certain amount of money. You wanna have this level of freedom of your time or your location, like you wanna be able to move around, but you don't know exactly what the thing is. Holding that energy, embodying that energy, and then going into a receptive space of maybe like a meditation or maybe just that relaxed state and just observing. What kind of sensory information are you getting? Maybe you start to get visuals. Maybe you start to hear like the higher version of you speaking to you through an inner conversation or maybe you're led through a visual experience or maybe you're just getting random glimpses and images of kind of things that you feel are in alignment with that energy, things that would feel good to you, things that imply to you that you're living your dream life. So maybe you're just getting clear on, when I close my eyes and when I feel into what it feels like to be supported, what does the version of me living a supported life feel like? If I was living my dream life and I felt fully supported to do the things that I needed to do and the things that I wanted to do and I had excess and overflow of all of the goodness in my life and I just had freedom, what kind of person would I be? What kind of person would I be if I was fully satisfied in all aspects of my life? this version of you what are they wearing what do they talk like what kind of conversations are they having like what kind of phone calls what kind of meetings are they having what kind of people are they speaking to what kind of people are you surrounded by what kind of places are you going what kind of environments are you in where do you live do you live in a different state a different city a different country do you drive a different kind of car do you wear a different style of clothes do you wear a different perfume or cologne like what does it mean to you like down to the t like down to the details can you get very clear on not only what is the energy that that person is embodying but what does this person look like what does it feel like to be this person if i was just transplanted into this version of me's body and i just went into that version of reality now where i was living my dream life 
How would I feel? How would I be walking? How would I carry myself? What kind of tone of voice would I use? All of these things can help you saturate yourself into the naturalness of becoming the version of yourself who's already living your dream life. Once you embody that version of yourself, you assume all of their belief systems. You assume their view on life. You assume their thoughts, their ideas, their visions of themselves, their worlds, their relationships, their self-concept. And so you need to start getting clear on what does this person think like? How does this person react to different situations, different scenarios? How do they handle different things that come up in life? Because if you're living a different kind of life, there might be different scenarios that pop up that require you to show up in a different way. So if you are already the person who is living this life, if it was already natural for you to do this and handle these kinds of situations, then what would your thought process be behind those things? It could be anything that's relevant to you living this life, but if you're not clear on it, being clear on the way that you want to feel is enough to get clear on all of the detail parts. And if you don't know all the detail parts right now, that's okay. You can be receptive to receiving the details, to receiving the guidance, to receiving the signals of this feels good. I would like to identify with this thing or no, that feels a little bit more like the old version of me or this thing is a little bit better, but I could see it even getting better for myself. Like this is not something that I'm willing to settle for. I know I could get better than that. And I know it could be better in this aspect, or I know that I could get a little bit more of this. So just play around with it and see what feels good and like what matches that energy that you initially keyed in on, okay? That root desire. Going along with like assuming these beliefs and the thoughts and the feelings and the assumptions of this new version of you, it's good to get clear on what kind of things are no longer an option. What kind of things are you no longer available for? What kind of things are you no longer gonna tolerate? What kind of boundaries do you have? What kind of things are you just simply not gonna accept anymore? That could be the way that people treat you. That could be the way that people interact with you. That could be the things that you're allowed to have or the things that are allowed to happen to you and for you. All of those things need to be very clear. So if I'm the new version of me living my dream life, then I'm probably not gonna be available for stories of people mistreating me, stories of being in situations and scenarios where I feel like things are unfair. I'm probably not gonna be available for stories where I feel lack, where I feel scarcity around being capable to have the things I want, being capable to do the things that I want. All those things need to be solidified so that when situations and scenarios come up in the 3D, you know how to respond to them in the way that is in alignment with the new version of you and you're not falling back into old story patterns. Also, what kind of things are you open and available to now? Feel into the expansiveness of the possibilities, infinite possibilities, realm of infinite possibilities, quantum realm, creation is finished, they're all there for you, just pick and choose. Here's the thing, here's a quick thing and then we'll move on. Saying that you know what you want from the energy of old you can sometimes be limiting. Even when you think you are stepping into a more limitless version of yourself or seeing things differently, you're going to see seeing things differently from a different perspective than a more expanded version of you is going to see seeing things differently from. Seeing the things you want, not from what do I think is okay for me to want, what is expected of me to want? What do I think that other people desire to see from me? What do I want because I'm comparing myself to other people and I want to be able to measure up to other people? No, it's what do you actually want? What is your actual soul's desire? What does your heart say that I want? If you no longer wanna be available for experiencing stories of being hurt, being in heartache, feeling unaccepted, feeling not prioritized, then what is the desire behind the complaint? What is the desire behind the lack? What is the desire behind the fear or the desperation or the neediness that you think manifesting the thing is going to give you? Because we can't have the thing until we give the experience to ourselves, right? Manifesting in the love or manifesting in somebody telling you that they accept you and they see you and that you're beautiful are not gonna mean very much to somebody who sees themselves as not worthy, not valuable, not chosen, not prioritized, right? It's gonna be very hard to get through to somebody that is hell-bent on seeing themselves in a limited victim, small-minded version of themselves. So if you're a person that's saying, I want to see myself as somebody who is loved, as somebody who feels confident, who feels empowered, who feels secure within themselves and who has that reflected to them in their reality, that would be the desire behind that complaint. If you feel like a victim, if you feel unaccepted, if you feel not chosen, then your desire is to be chosen. It is to be accepted. It is to feel loved unconditionally. So give that to yourself first. Go back to that root desire and say, I am fulfillment. I am wholeness. I am peace. I am love. I am bliss. I am joy. Whatever encompasses all of the feelings that you want to feel, 
be that first internally, give that to yourself internally, and then it can be reflected to you externally. Because even if you manifest your dream life, even if you are envisioning and trying to embody this version of yourself who feels better, who has a better concept of themselves, who feels more confident, who feels empowered, if you are still seeing yourself from a limited viewpoint, if you're still complaining, if you still feel like you're a victim to your circumstances and not the creator of your circumstances, then you're going to be stuck in this perpetual cycle of I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm wanting, I'm wanting, I'm wanting. Why is it not here? Why is it not here? Why is it not here? Just don't put yourself through that. Understand if there's something that I feel like I lack, if there's something that I feel like is not here, then I need to give that to myself first. So if I feel like it's not working, if I feel like it's not coming, if I feel like this is a big undertaking, then I need to tell myself it is working. I need to tell myself it is coming. I need to tell myself that it's easy, right? What's the desire behind this complaint? And what is the root desire behind all of these tangible things, all of these little bits and bobs what is the energy of the person who lives the life that all of these things are just natural, normal, necessary parts of my experience? I just don't even think that much about them because if you're already the version of yourself living that life where you feel expansive, where you feel empowered, where you feel capable, fulfilled, satisfied, then you're probably not too worried on this little thing here, this little thing there. You just know that that little thing gets to come, that little thing gets to come. Like, of course that gets to come, that's just easy. I want that thing, I've got that thing. It's as easy as like putting in an Amazon order. You just request what you want. You just know that you're gonna get it. You pay it, pay it in energy, pay it in attention, and then you just get the thing. So easy, natural, normal, feeling into the expansiveness and knowing that it is okay to want what you actually want and not want it from a limited perspective or what other people think is okay for you to want or what other people think is a reasonable thing to accomplish in a year or what you think is a reasonable thing to accomplish in a year. Not going based off that, but going based off of what do I actually want? If there is a complaint, what is the true desire behind the complaint? Not just what's gonna satisfy me for a little bit, not just what's gonna hold me off, not just like what's gonna make me feel better momentarily, but what will be for the well-being and fulfillment and holistic enjoyment of my life. If we can find that, if we can get to that root, manifesting your dream life is easy. Having a great year is easy. You'll be able to do that on autopilot, do it on repeat because you can just choose. This is the key energy. This is what we're embodying. This is what everything else is gonna be based on. Everything is a product of that level of fulfillment, not those things, the products being your fulfillment. It's not the tangible things or the experiences even. It is the way that you feel. And you can feel the thing before the thing is there. You can feel the thing before you see the thing. You can feel the thing before you truly know the thing and truly believe into the thing. You can start to feel it first. You can start to play around with the energy of it. You can get into that relaxed, receptive space and be guided to the things that are in alignment with that energy so that you can embody them, so that you can make them feel natural. You can use techniques and whatever other tools that you need in order to solidify that embodiment and in order to saturate yourself in that feeling so that it can be sustainable. So it's not a thing of, oh, I woke up brand new. Oops, I forgot who I was. Okay, now we're just gonna go throughout the year back in old version scenarios and old version cycles. And then you find yourself at the end of the year again, like, why did I not get all the things that I want? Why did I not hit my goals? Why am I not the person that I wanted to be? Where did I lose focus? Where did I lose sight? Well, there's a level of consistency that is needed. There's a level of discipline that is needed when you make a decision that I'm this person now. I'm going to identify as this person. I'm going to see myself as this person. I'm gonna see my life this way and I'm going to start expecting and assuming different things get to happen for me in my reality, get to be true for me in my reality and get to be the way that things just are. If you can't just say it once and say it with feeling and say it with conviction without going back to the old version of you, without resuming old story cycles and old story themes and belief systems and doubts and fears and logical explanations for why things have to happen the way that they are, then you have to understand that you lost your commitment somewhere. It's not because the thing doesn't work. It's not because you can't be the version of yourself that you want to be, but it's because you are not fully seeing yourself yet as that version of yourself, which is okay. It just doesn't feel natural yet. And that shouldn't scare you off. You shouldn't be scared off from your desires because it seems illogical or because it seems too big, or because you don't know how all the pieces are gonna fit together. Remember, it's not our job to figure out the how. It's not our job to be concerned with the messy middle. It is our job to embody the energy of the end, to get into the feeling state of the state of the wish fulfilled. So in the beginning, it does take either a intense level of conviction and intense determination that it is this way, I'm gonna be stubborn in it, I'm gonna be bold, I'm gonna have that level of brazen impudence and I'm just gonna say that things are the way that I want them to be no matter what. 
Otherwise, your work is to persist in that knowing, to continue to repeat it, to continue to return to that knowing, to continue to return to your choice and to make it over and over again as many times as you need to in order for it to be solidified, in order for you to start to impress your subconscious mind, in order to build those new neural pathways, those new ways of thinking, this new inner dialogue that the new version of yourself has. You have to train yourself in order to be this person if it doesn't feel natural to you yet it's not because it never will it's not because it can't happen it's not because it's hard it's just because you haven't practiced it yet and you've practiced being another version of yourself for a very long time that doesn't mean that it has to take a very long time for you to embody the new version it just means that it's going to take your dedication and your focus on it and for you to not be swayed back into the temptations of the old version story scenarios this that and the other that you know are not serving you you know is not favorable you know it's not your choice anymore so we're going to choose to focus on the new way we're going to choose to let ourselves want what we want we're going to choose to see our greatness and we're going to let that be what it is and we're going to persist in that and that is the vision let's maintain a singular focus on that and not worry about whatever is happening and all the circumstances on the outside and all the people and things telling us why not unimportant to somebody who already knows that it is, right? So step two, once you've gotten clear on what you want and why you want it and what it feels like to be the person having all the things that you want, let's get into the saturation of it all. This is where you get to choose your method. If you're gonna choose a technique to stick with, this is your time. First and foremost, may I recommend Pinterest? I could spend an ungodly amount of time on Pinterest, like literally hours. Pinterest is an amazing tool. We're no longer in the era where you have to get an actual poster board to do your vision board can literally do it on your laptop or on your phone. And with Pinterest, the thing is your vision board is unlimited. It can go on forever and ever and you can get so detailed about the things that you want. Obviously you could print out pictures from Pinterest and put them on a vision board if you want to. You can print out things, tape them up on the walls, put them on your mirrors, do whatever you want. But I'm just saying that Pinterest as a tool is so good. You can get really organized, you can get really detailed, like you can make boards within boards and like subsections and organize it the way you want. Once you have your home feed tuned the way you want it, then it's just like constant saturation, like more ideas for your visuals and different things that you never maybe even thought of, but that go along with encapsulating that vibe. Like Pinterest is very good at curation. So if you give it a clear focus, if you tune your home feed to like, I want to see this kind of thing, I want to see that kind of thing, then that's more of the stuff you're gonna see. Like the algorithm is really good is what I'm saying. So literally go on Pinterest and if you want to manifest a car, type in, matte black G-Wagon aesthetic. And then you'll see a whole bunch of pictures, pin them on your board, look underneath to see like the inspired pins, what could go along with this. Ooh, somebody's sitting in their G-Wagon with their little coffee, with like their keys, and it's just like an aesthetic little picture. And then you get into a visual of what it would be like to be driving in that car and going to get your matcha in the morning or going to get your coffee and feeling what it must be like to be the person that has this. And then you see, oh, the girl in the picture is wearing these shoes. Oh, those shoes are cute. Add those to the Pinterest board. And then you're like building a vibe. You're building like, do you know what I'm saying? I'm sure you know how a vision board works. Pinterest, get on there. Also helps with the get clear step if you don't already know plenty of ideas for you, but also just to be in the vibe of it, just to be saturated in it, Pinterest is a great social media app to be on if you're gonna be on one. If you're a person that likes to write, maybe you're a list person. All the things that come to mind of me living my dream life, I'm gonna write down. So in my dream life, I wake up at this time in the morning and I go to this place and maybe I take a Pilates class twice a week and maybe I walk my dog in this neighborhood and we walk this path and we see this. And then on these days I go and meet this person for lunch and then da, 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 da. so start making a list what is the list of things that are true for me if i'm living my dream life it feels so good to spend money in this way it feels so good to see this person it feels so good to be supported by my partner in this way it feels so good to do this in my business or it feels so good to do this for work i feel so passionate about this i'm doing this kind of hobby i'm learning a new language i'm doing whatever it is you want to do in the new year write it and make a list of it as if it's already you as if it already happened as if it's a normal part of your everyday life these are just things i do i'm just making a list of all the things that I do. And then from there, you can take that and you can start journaling from the perspective of you already living your dream life. It literally doesn't have to be exciting. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just like what is a typical average day in the life of you living your dream life? So that's a really good practice to do. If you want to affirm, we've set a really good foundation.
direction. You're very clear on what you want. You have a baseline energy to embody. So you don't really have to worry about what it is that you're affirming. As long as your affirmation is implying those things, it really doesn't matter what you're affirming. You can be affirming generally. You can choose to affirm specifically and still know that all the other things get to happen. You can be affirming specifically for one thing for a while and then you could switch to another thing or you could just affirm generally all the time or you could just choose to maintain your mental diet and make sure that you're still thinking in alignment with the version of you that you wanna be but then mostly just living your life. I have some general affirmations for you if you want them. Of course you can do, everything is wonderful. I love my life, I'm so in love with my life, everything is wonderful, I'm so grateful to live this life, my world is done in 180, that's a good one to think about like, oh my God, my life's literally done a 180. Like I'm living a completely different life. This is so crazy. I'm so happy to be doing what I love. I feel so free. I'm getting everything I want or simply I am that I am. I like to do things like I'm God and there is no other. I am that I am. I'm always getting what I want. Like things that are like general, I guess what you would call self-concept affirmations are good to just empower you and help you get into that knowing that you are capable, that you are worthy right now, that you can do all the things that you want right now, that you are the operant power and that you're in control. You're in the decision seat. You get to decide what's happening. So if you're saying, I am that I am, I am God and there is no other, there is no other power outside of me you are still implying all your other things because you've already listed out, you already know what it is you want, and now you are cultivating the belief system that you are capable of manifesting all these things and whatever else you want. But generally, it doesn't matter what you're affirming as long as it's in alignment with that end. Now, I have to address this because I don't have to, but I'm going to. A lot of people will just tell you robotic affirm, just robotic affirm, and you can totally do that if you want. I have no problem with people who want to robotic affirm. If you want to robotically affirm, I'm living my dream life. I'm living my dream life. I manifest my dream life overnight. I manifest my dream life. I manifest my dream life. I manifest my dream life. You can totally do that then. If that's what you want to do, that's great. I mean, we're done here. Have a great year. The thing about robotic affirmations for me is I don't teach from that space because it's not something that I enjoy. Have I used robotic affirmations? Yes. Do I still sometimes use them? Yes, if I feel like it's necessary. Nothing's really necessary, but if I feel in a state where I feel like they're gonna be helpful for me, then I will. It's rare, but I will if I want to, but it generally is not something that fills me up. It's not something that makes me feel excited or good about manifestation, and it's not something that I enjoy doing. Also, I'm halfway physically incapable of robotically affirming at this point because if I start robotically affirming a single phrase, Literally after like five repetitions, I will be off on a tangent somewhere else. It will turn into an affirmation rampage because I cannot just stay on one thing. Like I wanna dive into it. I wanna get excited about it. I wanna like build up a level of emotional intensity about it, right? So robotic affirming doesn't work for me because it's just, that's the point of it being robotic. It's meant to be without feeling. It's just for purely the repetition. And for me, it is more important to me the quality of my affirmations than the quantity of my affirmations. I know that you could affirm a billion times and get it because the repetition does work, but I also know that you could make a very firm decision. You could affirm with a deep intention and a deep knowing that you already are that person. You could have a strong conviction, a strong feeling of knowing and being assured and just assuming that things are the way you want them to be. And then you don't really have to affirm that much. Just my cup of tea personally. For me, the thing about robotic affirming is I don't feel like you need me to hold your hand in order for you to do that. It's pretty cut and dry. Just say the thing that you want over and over again until it manifests. And if you don't feel like the person who is capable of maintaining it after it manifests, you're probably gonna have to keep affirming because if you don't keep robotically affirming and you don't feel like you identify with the thing that you affirmed, it's probably not gonna stick around that long just a word of caution. If you can robotically affirm from the state of already being identified with the thing that you're manifesting and knowing that you're calling it in, using it just simply as a tool and having full faith that it's gonna work, then of course robotic affirming is gonna work. It just is dependent on whether or not that's something that you are willing to do. I personally am most of the time not willing to do that because it annoys the hell out of me. That does not take away from the power of robotic affirming. That does not take away from your ability to choose to robotically affirm if that's the way that you want to manifest. Um, I don't care. But like I said, I don't feel like you need me to hold your hand for that. We're here to get a little bit deeper below the surface. Other than that, obviously visualization. If you are a visualizer, do this. And maybe if you aren't a visualizer, try this and see if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, that's fine, but maybe try it because it might feel good. So for your sat scene, can you visualize this time next year? 
New Year's Eve next year or the holiday season next year and sometime fourth quarter next year, looking back at 2024 and feeling satisfied, feeling like you accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish. You fully embody the version of yourself that you wanted to be and you lived it and you experienced the things you wanted to experience. You had the time of your life. You had your best year yet. Can you create an imaginal scene that implies that energy, the energy of satisfaction, the energy of like, whoa, I did it. Like I actually did it of looking back at the year and being proud of yourself and being satisfied with what you've accomplished and being excited, knowing that you're capable, knowing that you've done it before and visualizing what you would even visualize for the next year, for 2025 after that. Can you shift to a year from now and live in that end as your imaginal scene? I feel like that is so powerful to look back on the year and say, wow, I did it. I accomplished everything I want to do and to have the overarching feeling or the root desire of satisfaction be the dominant mood and the dominant vibe for that visual scene. That's a pretty good visual to me. See yourself in the scene, maybe being congratulated by people in your reality for having gotten that promotion or having bought the new house or having renovated your current house or getting married to your SP or having a baby or starting your family, whatever it is you want. See that scene and feel the fulfillment and the harmony and the just goodness, all the goodness that has culminated throughout the whole year and just feel satisfied with that. And if you can go to sleep in that feeling, you're a golden girly. If you can stick with that, like by the end of the year, you will have manifested so much insane stuff, like all the things that you wanted and so much more just by being in that energy of whatever would imply that I am so satisfied, I feel so filled up. All those things would have had to happen before. So it doesn't really matter if you don't know all the things now, you know that things were good and you know that things happened and you know that you liked when the things happened. If you can imply that with the scene of looking back fondly on 2024 and having gratitude for that already being fulfilled. No matter what technique you choose, do not feel discouraged if it feels bizarre at first. Don't feel scared off if at first it doesn't feel comfortable for you to settle in this new version of yourself. If you still don't feel fully identified with it, that is the point of the techniques. That's the point of the tools for you to have them in your toolbox, for you to use them when they're helpful to you and to help saturate yourself, to help make it feel more natural but you have to remain consistent with it. Not that you have to persist with a level of effort that is forceful or with some urgency that I must fix this or I must change this or I must heal myself or else all of these things are not gonna be able to happen. Putting yourself in a state of like being in a time crunch of like, I have to accomplish all these things this year, but more in a state of like, I get to do all this. I get to be open to all of this happening and I get to be guided. I get to have help along the way. And if I don't know how now, that's okay because I know what I want and I am very clear. I've taken the action that is required of me, which is to just know what I want and just to feel like I already have it or to feel like I know for sure that it is coming and that it is coming soon. Okay. Not that it's a far off possibility, but that in this year, this is the year that I'm having. This is what I'm manifesting. So in some way, shape or form, I must have this fulfillment. If you persist in it with a level of certainty, with a level of, I'm not going to give up on this. This is my choice. This is my desire. It is this, or the alternative is remaining in the old reality, looking back at life a year from now and thinking, well, there's another year down the drain. Didn't do the things I wanted to do. Don't feel like the most embodied version of myself. Don't feel like the highest version of myself. Don't feel like a person who's satisfied or empowered or in joy or who feels loved. Unsatisfied, unfulfilled. That's not the energy that we want to go into it with. So if it doesn't feel natural right now, the point is to persist in it, to continue to tell yourself these stories, to continue to practice popping into that new version of yourself even if it's just once a day when you do your imaginal scene and do it then and then just keep persisting in it just keep returning to that knowing keep returning to your choice keep remaining faithful to your decision to live this kind of life before you see it manifested before anything can happen for you before you can feel like your concept of yourself is fully shifted and that you're capable of maintaining this life for yourself you have to build the infrastructure in order to maintain that knowing, that lifestyle, that state of being. In order for that to be your dominant state all the time, you have to get some practice in it. You have to start to make it feel natural. So that begins with telling the story, even when the story feels illogical, even when it feels not very possible, even when it feels a little bit scary, even if there's still some fear around it or some things that still need to be worked out, that's okay. The things get to be worked out 
along the way. We're not gonna wait to meet a certain criteria before we can ask for something or before we're allowed to want something or before we're allowed to see something for ourselves. The conditions of before, the past stories, the past criteria, the past expectations of what were possible, of what was available, of what could happen no longer apply once you've assumed this new version of yourself. So stick with that and stick with your fulfillment and your end in order to get those results or stick with the old version of you, stick with the old story and know full well what that's gonna bring for you and that you're probably not gonna be satisfied with it, but at least you'll know, at least you weren't that scared of it, at least you felt comfortable because you knew what to expect, even if what you're expecting is shitty. I mean, those are your choices. Sometimes it needs to be put that bluntly because you do have a choice. You have a choice to start seeing it differently or you have a choice to remain in stuckness and this is hard and I don't know how and I don't see the path but it is your choice to make. It is your choice to walk the invisible path. It is your choice to walk by faith and not by sight. And to say, even if I don't know, even if it feels scary, even if I don't know how to trust, I have to put it somewhere else. I have to put it in this place because the alternative is non-fulfillment. Because the alternative is remaining a victim to these circumstances, remaining a victim to the stories that I've been told, to what I've been taught, to what I've been programmed to believe and expect and think was possible for myself and my life. Or I can just say, fuck that. I'm gonna start seeing it differently and I don't care how long it's gonna take. I don't care what I'm gonna have to do. I don't care what the undertaking is. I'm gonna tell myself now that it gets to be easy. I'm gonna tell myself now that I get to maintain this knowing that it gets to be consistent for me, that I get to be this version of myself no matter what. This is the way things are now. This is what I expect for myself. This is how I assume things work for me. These are my beliefs. This is what I know. This is my truth. So want that life for yourself boldly and stubbornly and tell yourself that you get to have it. Keep reminding yourself that this gets to be your truth. If it is your desire, then it is God's desire for you to have it because God is experiencing life through you and as you. All these don'ts or all these conditions, all these things don't apply anymore. They mean a lot about the old version of you and the old version stories, but they don't have to mean anything about where you can go, about what you're capable of doing from this point forward. So just remain faithful to your heart's desire because nothing is off limits to you. Nothing is denied to you when you say that you are. So also I wanna mention, first of all, don't be afraid to go extremely into detail if there are things you want. This is not to imply that you can't go into specific detail and get the detailed things that you want because of course you can. But we always want to leave space for it gets to be better, there gets to be more. And if you don't know what you want, then you want to leave space for I just get to have whatever's in my highest good. I just get to embody this feeling and know that all the things that are expressed outwardly from this feeling are for my highest good and for the highest good of all. I don't want to hear anything about for the highest good of all. Okay, I know a lot of people are scored and scarred from the law of attraction. I just cannot see a world where something in your highest good is not for your highest good. Like how could that ever not be a good thing? And I see a world where the things that are for your highest good can also be for the highest good of others. When you're in a high vibrational state or a positive state, meaning that you are desiring and acquiring the things that you want in your life, that's what I mean by high vibe, feeling like you're capable, you're expansive, you're in your power. Those things being true could never not be a good thing for you. It could never not be for your highest good and those things that are for your highest good, things that are your desires, even if they seem selfish for you, get to impact people in a positive way. They get to be good for the collective. They get to be good for the people in your family, for your loved ones, for your friends, for your partner, for the people that you work with. It gets to be reflected in everything you do, that you are a fulfilled person, that you feel good, that you're living a life that you enjoy. That gets to be a good thing. And if you're not clear yet on a life that you enjoy, but you know that you want to manifest your dream life, then just say, I'm so happy and grateful that everything is happening in my highest good. I'm so happy that I'm living a life that is so fulfilling to me. I'm so grateful that I'm living a life that brings me so much satisfaction. Thank God in me, thank God in me, thank God in me. You can leave it at that and still get everything you want. And it can be even better than you ever could have expected or imagined for yourself. Because also sometimes it's better to be in that state than be so attached to all the specific things because you have too much of like a microscopic focus instead of the macro view of like I get to have all the things that are encompassed within this feeling. When you make yourself that open, you are very receptive to all of the good. You're very receptive to things that maybe you couldn't have seen from a past limited version of yourself. Maybe things that you wouldn't have even thought to 
see for yourself or visualize or affirm for, those things get to come anyway because you are embodying the energy that is aligned with those things. And that version of you living in that reality, living in your dream life knows that those things are natural and normal. So those are the kind of things that you're gonna see in your experience. That is so possible, that is so available for you, and it is a valid option. Either way you choose to go is valid. Step three, after you've gotten clear, after you've chosen your method, then you're gonna get into deciding mode, okay? You're gonna make your firm decision. Ultimately, whatever you decide to do, you need to decide to do it. So whatever method you chose, you need to make a decision that what you're doing is going to work. You need to make a decision that it already worked. Remember going back to the end or going forward to the end where it already happened, where it's already done, implies that at some point along the line, you made a decision that this was going to work for you. You made a decision that this is what's happening now, this is what you're available for, this is the way that things get to go. Really that conviction, the firm decision that things are the way that I say they are, I am the version of myself that I say I am, I am living the life that I want to live, that decision is enough if you don't go back into old stories, if you don't go back to wavering, if you don't go back and forth. Now, is there room for imperfection in this journey? Is there room for spiraling or having an off day or having a doubt or fear or feeling a little anxious around something? Yes, there is room. There's so much room for grace. There's so much room for the human experience. I feel like that's something that's obvious, but maybe I haven't made obvious enough. I'm never saying that you have to be perfect. I'm never saying that it is your job to completely deny all sensory information, to live in a fantasy realm and reality where things are just the way you want them to be. And I don't have to worry about doing this thing in a 3D or taking care of this responsibility or talking to this person or showing up in this way. I'm just gonna tell people that it's this way when really it's not this way. And that kind of feels weird to me, but I feel like I'm obligated to tell them that it is this way. And if I'm already living my dream life and that means that I don't have to pay for this thing and that this thing should be going this way and that I can neglect this thing. I'm not saying to do that. I'm not saying neglect your 3D, decide that things are the way you want them to be so you're just going to go off and live in magical fairyland. In your head, in your mind, in your safe place, you live in magical mental fairyland. But in the 3D, you finish out the old story, you finish the script, and you know that you're following a bridge of incidents that is guiding you on your path to merging with the timeline that shoots off into the branch that is your chosen reality. You're merging with that timeline and following that to your end. But in order to get there, you need to go through the things that you've already created. Again, that journey, that process, that path, that bridge of incidents doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be prolonged and you prolong it by thinking of your desire and not thinking from it. You prolong it by saying it's not working or this and that need to happen first or there's this condition, I have this limitation, it has to happen in this way. Divine timing is a thing. Is this really for the highest good of all? Is this really what I want? By the wavering, by the going back and forth, by not making a firm decision, these are the things that make it take a long time, that make it seem like your decision didn't actually work because you didn't actually make a decision, right? If you're going back and forth, if you're wavering, then no wonder you're getting hot and cold behavior. Your results are not sticking. You haven't been firm about it. You're not remaining faithful. That is what the persistence is. It's not to exhaust yourself on techniques. It is to stand firm. I cannot be moved. I cannot be shifted. I'm in alignment. I'm staying in alignment. And I'm going to remember that this is where I have to be if I want to be an energetic match for the life that I want to live. So if there are times where I forget, if there are times where I waver or I falter, I know that it's not like I've fallen off and now I have to climb up all these rungs again. I have to climb back up the ladder to get where I used to be. I just get to resume the knowing of who I am. I just get to be like, oh yeah, I remember. Oh yeah, it does get to be this way. Oh yeah, I'm living this life. Previous things, previous misgivings, your sins get to be forgiven. You're born new every day. You get to repent. And by repenting, I mean returning back, being faithful to your conviction, letting the old man die again and being born anew in your Christ consciousness. New version of self, new self-concept. I will be born again as a brand new fresh baby as many times as I need to be in this new reality in order to make it solid, in order to make it natural. I will keep returning. I will keep persisting no matter what I see, no matter what's happening, no matter how long it's taking, no matter if I think this is reasonable at this point, no matter if it seems logical, I'm just going to keep returning. That is what the decision is. You make a firm decision and you stick with the decision. So first, that's why you get clear. So once you make a decision, you know why you get to be firm in it. You know why you're not gonna go back to old ways of thinking. You know that this is the path that you choose because the other path is no longer viable. It's not favorable. You don't like the things that are happening on that path. 
it doesn't fulfill you, it doesn't feel good, it's not a dream life, it's maybe a nightmare life, or maybe it's just an okay life, but you can be available for not just good enough, but it gets to be better than good enough. It gets to consistently be exciting and enjoyable. And you get to know that the bridge is unfolding in your favor, that you are being guided, that you are being led no matter what. So completely eliminate and remove the option of going back to the old version. That's why you have to be diligent about being the observer of your mind. That's why sometimes you just need to initially go on that mental diet and have that level of discipline where you are a little bit more regimented about it. You can decide that if you're doubting that things get to be the way that you decided that they are that it doesn't matter you get to release doubts you get to understand that that's from an old version of you it no longer applies to what's happening now and you get to move fully into being the version of yourself that you want to be you get to continue to return you get to see it for what it is you get to see that fear you get to understand that that fear is implying that there's a deeper desire there's a deeper need that has not yet been met you get to see that emotional signal for what it is not as something that's scary or something that's bad or that makes you wrong or that you're not doing things right, but just as an indication that there's some level of emotional or energetic misalignment. It's just a signal. Just decide that every time that scenario happens that you will return, that you will be faithful, that you will be consistent, and that it will become more natural, that it will get easier, and that you will have less and less of these moments where you have to remind yourself so firmly or so forcefully or so diligently that it is this way, and you get to get to a level where you just know where it feels natural, where you do have belief in it, where you do have faith, where you do have trust, because you've built up this rapport with yourself and with the law and with your world of knowing that you can have a level of positive expectation, not an expectation that's based on the past, the past scenarios, the past stories, the past versions of people, situations, and conditions. And you get to know that once I assume a new level of being, once I assume a new version, that it comes along with new beliefs, new ways of seeing things, new experiences. And I get to fully accept that that is my good and my good is for me if I desire the thing, the thing is good, I get to have the thing and the thing just gets to be. You get to release all conditions of why you're deserving of having these things or why it gets to happen in this way or why all the things that you had in your five-year plan actually get to get condensed into this year and why it just all gets to happen. There doesn't need to be a reasoning other than that's what you want. That is your reasoning. This is what I want. This is what makes me feel fulfilled. This is what will satisfy me. This is what would be an enjoyable experience to me. And that is enough. You get to have it just because you do. You get to manifest it just because it's your choice. You get to be that person because that's just who you are. It's just who you've decided to be. And you can decide to be anything. You can decide to be a victim to your circumstance, or you can decide to be the decider of your circumstances. You can decide to be somebody who is subject to outside conflict, outside factors, and that gets to determine what happens for you. That gets to determine your belief systems and what you think you're capable of. Or you get to decide to be the person who knows that it's just you choosing, that it's just your vision and your image of things that gets to manifest and gets to be the way that things are. Don't assume that just because the bridge is unfolding in a certain way that your manifestation is not happening. Everything is unfolding in your favor. Everything is leading you to that end. You have to go into it with that knowing, with that knowledge that it has to unfold in your favor, that it has to be the way that you want it to be, that things are already happening, that the movement is already there. If you don't see it, it's just because it's still in the realm of the unseen, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. That doesn't mean shifts aren't being made. It's happening. It is happening as soon as you decide it's happening. And just keep up that story. If anything, keep reminding yourself that you are the only cause, that there is no outside person, there is no outside being, there is no outside factor or system outside of the law, the law of correspondence, whether you resonate with the law of attraction or the law of assumption or a law of magical fairy pixie dust, I don't really care. The law of correspondence is what you give is what you get. Who I am is what I'm gonna see. What I'm projecting is what is reflecting. That's what it is. You have to remind yourself that if you are the only cause of all of this, that you must go forward and prepare this place for yourself because either it is gonna be prepared by you coming from that newfound perspective that you get to create this life, that you get to live the life that you want, or it's going to continue to be decided by the already known factors, by the limitations, by the predetermined program, whether it's determined by society or by your parents or what a teacher told you when you were growing up. When you get conditioned to think and believe in a certain way and to have a certain worldview, all those things no longer have to apply. Failure and non-fulfillment are no longer an option because by doing this, you are ensuring that you have prepared that place and you're ensuring that you are being guided, that you are walking the steps, that it is happening 
because you are persisting in the story that it is happening, that it is working, that I am the person living this life, that it gets to happen just because I said it does. And I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to be led. I'm going to do what's required of me by any means possible. But I know that no physical action that I take will ever lead to that end if I don't assume the knowing of already being that person now, if I don't embody myself within that feeling state now, no matter how much I do, no matter how much I effort toward it, no matter how much willpower I put towards this thing, towards this end, towards living this life, it will never fully come to fruition the way that I want it to in a way that feels fully satisfying to me unless I feel that satisfaction beforehand. You assume going into it that you're gonna have this certain outcomes. So you assume going into the year, stepping into 2024, you've already claimed your victory. 2024 is a year of flawless victory. So you're going into it assuming that, oh, I already know I have this in the bag. I already know I'm doing all the things that I want to do. I already know that I'm the version of myself that I want to be. I know that if I want to do this, that I'm totally capable. I know that if I want to pick up this new habit, if I want to start doing this new hobby, if I want to learn a new skill, if I want to show up in a new way, if I want to try a new thing, that thing is gonna be successful because I'm gonna choose for it to be successful because I know that in everything I do, failure is not an option. Non-fulfillment is not an option. The only way that it could not manifest, the only way that it could not be fulfilled is if I give up on it, is if I stop persisting in it, is if I go back to the version of me before I made the choice. But I am choosing right now to stay stuck in this version of me. If I'm gonna be stuck anywhere, I'm gonna be stuck in my fulfillment. I'm gonna be stuck in success upon success upon success upon success. I'm gonna be stuck in better and better and better and better in a constant cycle of, oh my God, how is it this good? Oh my God, how does that thing get to happen? And then that thing happened. It's not your job to know how it's gonna happen. It's just your job to assume that it's already done. If you put your best foot forward and know that you fully have the backing of infinite intelligence to pick up where you left off and match you, match your energy, like I'm willing to give this, this is my best, this is what I have, even if it's not a lot today, even if it's not 100%, I'm dominantly in this state and I know that the universe is gonna match me. I know that God is gonna match me. I know that my faith is going to carry me the rest of the way. If that's all you've got to give towards the manifestation of it, then that's fine because the how is not your concern. The only thing you need to do is be and release your limitations and expectations around how it needs to happen, why it gets to happen, what conditions and circumstances and scenarios need to happen or cannot happen or else you're not going to be able to do something or else you're not worthy of having the things that you want. It is a choice. Whenever you say it's done, it's done. Whatever you say you're capable of is what you're capable of. You need to cultivate a level of expecting your good, of seeing your good in advance. You make your assumption not based on 3D evidence, not based on what is logical, but based on what you actually want, based on what you actually see for yourself and based off of what feels good. Make a decision that now just gets to be easy. You just get to let it go. That energy, flawless victory. I will be victorious because I choose to be, not because it was by chance, not because I was lucky, but because I had a positive level of expectation, so much so that it's an assumption, so much so that it is a knowing, so much so that it is a belief. I believe it to be true. I know it to be true. This is the truth that I choose for myself. It just gets to be the way that you want it to be because you chose it, because you accept it, because you made yourself available for it and because you're willing to be guided to do the things that need to be done in order for you to live that life. You're willing to walk the bridge, you're willing to allow things to unfold, and you're willing to be an open and receptive vessel for your good. That is positive expectation. So to wrap this up in a nice, neat little bow, this year, we're deciding that we get to have the things that we want. We're deciding that it gets to be easy, it gets to be effortless, and if we don't know how yet, that's okay. We get to be guided, we get to know the things just get to happen. Everything gets to happen in our favor and it gets to happen for the highest good. If 2023 was not the year for you, if it wasn't the year that you got the manifestation, if you feel like you were struggling to understand, if you feel like you were struggling to manifest it, if you feel like you were struggling to fully embody the version of yourself who you wanted to be, this year that wasn't your problem. This year your problem was that you had so much goodness, so many manifestations, so much fulfillment to keep up with that you just had to make more space. You just had to keep making yourself available and making yourself open to contain all this good, to hold it all, to keep it all, to sustain it all. But you figured out how to make it easy. You figured out what works for you. You figured out what makes manifestation fun and you were able to do it in a way that is fulfilling, in a way that feels good. 
for you. That's the goal of all this, right? Is to find the thing that feels good, to find the way that feels like truth for you and to find the stories that feel good to tell, to find the visualizations that feel good to saturate yourself in and to find the belief systems and the ways of talking, the ways of speaking, the ways of thinking, the ways of being that excite you, that fill you up, that light you on fire, that make you passionate about life, that make you excited to live another year and to do it bigger and to do it better and to do it with more flair and finesse and just to go and be you, to be fully you, to be fully embodied and being that version of you and to do it unapologetically, to do it authentically, to do it from a place of alignment, to do it from a place of soul fulfillment, to do it fulfilling that heart's desire, not the desires of the world, not the desires of your parents, of your coworkers, of your partner. Do it in a way that fulfills you. Fill your own cup to be your own fulfillment and to let everything that you're manifesting this year be a product of that fulfillment. To be able to put yourself in that end, to look back retrospectively at 2024 and to say, I did it. I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. I built a foundation of goodness where I know that it gets to be good and I know that it gets to continually get better and better. And now that I know that I'm capable of doing this, I can do it again next year and the year after that, and the year after that for the rest of my life. It's just my continual fulfillment forever and ever. It gets to be good. I get to live a blessed life. I get to live a good life and I get to choose that. It gets to be on purpose, not an accident, not just because I was lucky, not just because I'm privileged or it happened by circumstance. I choose circumstances. I chose my fulfillment and that's the life that I get to live a life I love, my dream life. That's what we're manifesting for 2024. That's what I see for you. That's what I see for me. That's what I see for us, for all ears listening, for all eyes watching. I speak flawless victory, love, compassion, peace, fulfillment, bliss, and ease in everything that you do this year for the things that you want to come to you in effortless ways, in ways that were even better than you even imagined them, for your good to just compound and stack on top of each other and just for there to be so much that you just have to widen your reach to be able to contain and encompass all the goodness that is coming for you this year. I speak it over you, I feel it for you, I see it for you, I know it for you, and I know that you know it for you as well. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me today. I really hope you guys enjoyed and got something of value from this video. Please be sure to leave your questions, comments, concerns in the comment box below and check out the description for my social media links, services, all that good stuff is down below. And other than that, I love you all so much. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.